Hello, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm going to show you guys my glass. You can see that pretty iris. This one is frosted, um, embossed irises. <coughs> and this guy is a little rubber um, hat for a cup. Uh, these things are pretty cool. Um, they keep the bugs out of your wine so that you can not worry about swallowing bugs. And I have a cough drop, so hopefully you guys can understand me. I can't do this video without the cough drop. I tried it. <clears throat> does not work. So, yeah. I think I'm coming down with something, or have been. Um, I had to actually go to bed earlier than normal last night. Uh, I normally make it through the end of Nicole's sprints um, midweek, and I was fading. <clears throat> so I'm definitely coming down with something. Um, and the house guests with all the smoke um, did not help. So it's going to be fun. We'll get through it. It'll be fun. Um, so I'm going to show you guys all the books I finished in April. I've pretty much done a book a day, maybe a little more than a book a day. Um, which is about right for what I've been doing this year. Um, I think according to Goodreads, um, if the numbers play out right, it says I finished 130 books this year and that I'm 30 books ahead. <clears throat> so this must be the 100th day of the year. <clears throat> so anyway, that's kind of where I'm at. Um. We did start the read-along for Rebecca. Um, I have finished Rebecca, but that is not something that everybody is expected to do by now. Um, I don't think anybody else that's reading, reading Rebecca with us is done. So, uh, you're not behind, I'm ahead. Um, but we did our... Um, live reading sprints last night with Nicole at Dusty Book Sniffers um, about Rebecca and focused on that book for most of her sprints. I think she probably switched to another book after a while there. Once I went to bed because I was fading. Yeah. So um, probably by the end of the weekend most people that are reading Rebecca will be done with it. Um, but you have some time if you wanted to join in and just couldn't yet. Um, and it doesn't take that long. It is a thriller. So it takes a little while to build up the story. Once you get into the plot, it's fast. Um, so it's not one of those books where I would recommend dragging it out too off, you know, too many sessions, too many days. You want that momentum to help drive the reading. Um, so, yeah, it's not that hard a book. Um, it's not that long. Um, I think the audiobook is 15 hours, something like that. Um, and the one I listened to works just fine at two times speed. That's about my speaking speed. Um, and so it's about seven and a half hours. Not that bad. Um, yeah. So, um, Rebecca is underway. Um, I will put the link for the Discord for my Discord in the description. Because <clears throat> that's where we're doing the discussion for Rebecca. And for The Deep End of the Ocean <clears throat> by Jacqueline Mitchard. And The English Patient by Michael Ondatye. <clears throat> so, if you wanted to read any of those... Um, and want to join in on the discussion for them, um, my Discord is a good place for that. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if eventually we're going to do sprints that are talking specifically about the Mitchard book. I imagine that we will probably talk about it on sprints, <clears throat> just maybe not as the focus of those sprints. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so, what did I read in April? Um, I'm just going to show you the books, tell you a bit about them, 
Um, I will do a more readathon oriented video later, probably at the end of the weekend, um, talking about where I'm at in Old School April and Aurelium and the Dungeons and Dragons Tomes and Treasures readathon. Um, because I need to actually tally up my points and figure out where I'm at. Um, and I'm probably going to go to bed shortly after I get this video uploading um, so that I don't get really sick before Dewey's Readathon, which starts on Saturday morning. And I will be running that with some great admins. <clears throat> um, every year we have to figure out who's still able to do the time to be an admin on, on Dewey's. So um, this time around I have <clears throat> a few thin spots, so I will be looking for new admins, but um, <clears throat> it's actually going really smoothly. So I'm anticipating that even if I get a bit sick or stay a bit sick, it should go okay, um, which is great. I've had some where that was not the case. I had one where I was the least sick of everybody that was participating in running it. And everybody else was so bad that they were just checking in every once in a while and then disappearing again. That was not fun. So I'm hoping this is not one. So I am going to be uh, doing more of my um, update videos that I normally was thinking about doing in the middle of the week um, at the end of the weekend. Um, after hopefully I've recovered from Dewey's. Um, anyway, the books. <clears throat> what have I finished in April? Um, so the book that I finished most recently <clears throat> is this one. So this is Faculty of Murder by June Wright. So this book I finished today, started and finished today. <clears throat> it's not very long. Um, it's a classic murder mystery from 1960. Um, June Wright is an Australian author. Her books are set in Australia. Um, and this one is a campus murder. Um, or a campus suspicious death that is probably murder. That, just from the fact that it's in this book, it's probably murder. Um, so it's one of those. Um, the sleuth is a nun uh, named Mother Paul. Um, she has had one adventure before this, it's alluded to, um, but it's not really a series in the, in the sense that you have to read one before the, you read the next and all that, uh, that I can tell so far. Uh, certainly this could function as a standalone, um, but there is another one before this, um, that introduces Mother Paul, um, and I don't know which one that is. But I will be looking for more books by this author. It was fun. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if any of my Australian booktuber friends have read June Wright. Um, but yeah, if you have read June Wright, whether you're Australian or not, let me know what you think. And what books have you read by this author? Um, yeah, and which book is number one and, and what do you think of that one? Um, I will be looking for them, but... They are Australian books, and I'm not anywhere near Australia. So um, it may be a while before they filter into the used bookstores here. Um, and I still am not ordering expensive books. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so this is the latest finished book for um, April. Also finished today, of course. <clears throat> Rebecca by Daphne de Maurier. Um, this is the second Daphne de Maurier book that I've finished this month. The third that I would be finishing this month, I put somewhere. And now I can't figure out where I put it. And I don't even remember what it looked like. I know it's in print, and I think it's paperback. So I will get back to it when I find it. 
and hopefully this month. <clears throat> so I will probably read a bunch of Daphne to Mario this month. Uh, I seem to be in the mood for it. But anyway, uh, what did I think of Rebecca? Um, it was good. Uh, I definitely liked it. I definitely am reminded of certain characters and scenes and scenarios in Agatha Christie books reading this one. Um, I think it's more just a sign of the times sort of thing that they all um, are writing similar books because that's just what things are like. Um, and there's only so many kinds of characters you can pick from if you're not going to do sci-fi or fantasy. So yeah, if you like Ag Agatha Christie though, and if you've run out of Agatha Christie, which I kind of have, Daphne du Maurier might be a good next author. Because um, several of her books have similar enough scenarios and characters that they're similarly appealing to Agatha Christie and well written. Um, Damare's writing is lovely. Um, it has all the right description. It's you know, not too flowery and it's not just action driven. Um, so very much like Agatha Christie in that respect. Um, it's more literature within the genre. Um, I won't tell you too much about what goes on in this one. Uh, there's already so many spoilers just because there's movies from it. Um, but the movie I've seen, the black and white old movie, um, I remember Manderley burning. That's the most salient image from the trailer, from the movie itself. That's what I remember. So the majority of this book <clears throat> is not that scene. Uh, so I thought I kind of knew what was going to happen because of the movie but I didn't remember it that well and there's a lot more in the book that didn't make it into the movie and I think they changed some stuff to make it work for the movie for their budget and, and what they wanted to say so I need to rewatch the movie now and see how much they actually did change um, but yeah I really liked it so if you're on the fence about reading Rebecca you should it's not very long um, it's audiobook is 15 hours, which is not very long either. It works really well at two times speed, um, about the same speed as what I talk. So you may be one of those people that has to slow me down to be able to understand what I'm saying, but I think a lot of people speed up booktube videos to watch them. So yeah, anyway, that's Rebecca, um, read along should be going for at least the rest of the week and the thread on my discord should be up kind of indefinitely. I don't see any reason to get rid of it anytime soon. Um, so it'll be there if you want to chat Rebecca with other people. Um, mm -hmm. All right, this one is an accomplishment. Gone with the wind. I woke up this weekend thinking, I want to read something significant. It's been a while. What can I finish or what can I read that is significant and fits within my parameters for this month? And then I thought about Gone with the Wind and the fact that I've started it several times in print and have not finished it yet. Well, I have now, uh, but I hadn't then. So I did. So I found a better audiobook. I went on Libby and found an audiobook on Libby that's much better than the one I was listening to before. <clears throat> um, I don't remember offhand which version it was, but it's the one on Libby um, that I could find on there. And there was only one on there. Uh, but I'd found several different audiobooks on uh, YouTube. And they weren't very good. Um, they were better than just reading it by eyeballs, I suppose, except that then my internet actually went out for long enough. The last morning I was reading Gone with the Wind using the audiobook so that I didn't have the audiobook and had to read the last 150 pages 
with my eyeballs. Just the eyeballs. Which a lot of people don't do much anymore. Um, yeah. <sighs> well, uh, it probably went faster because I do read quickly once I get into it. Um, and it was morning, so I had good lighting and everything. Um, it is really small font in this copy. And it's falling apart. The pages literally are falling out of this book. So, now it is done. Gone with the Wind is checked off my list. And I actually gave this book probably 4.75 stars on Storygraph, 5 stars on Goodreads. Um, I actually liked it. <clears throat> um, I don't like all the racial stuff. Um, but I am quite well aware that the time and the place that this story is set in necessitates that there be names and, and terms used for non-white races. And for that matter, poor white people. Um, there are quite a few uh, derogatory terms for poor white people in here as well. Um, that are just part of that setting. Um, I don't live in the South for reasons. That's part of it. Um, it's just that's part of the culture, especially in the time that the Civil War was going on in the South. Um, yeah, so um, I know a lot of people that won't read it because of, you know, all the the stuff that's just not politically acceptable at all anymore in this book um and yeah if it depends very much on what you're reading for um i'm reading for knowing what the books say what they're about and you know what stories they're trying to sell and yeah so anyway i actually really liked it um i disliked Scarlet intensely for the majority of the book, but she did get better. And I really liked Rhett Butler. Yeah. He may be one of my favorite um, dashing hero type um, characters in a book. He reminded me a lot of Francisco Donconia from Atlas Shrugged, which was an interesting comparison because I don't normally think of stories like Gone with the Wind in the same category as Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. Not the same kind of story at all, but Rhett Butler and Francisco D'Anconia are very similar characters. Um, and they're even problematic in some of the same sorts of ways and their personal ethics are similarly um, well defined for themselves but maybe not socially acceptable to everybody else so and I um, I listed Francisco D'Anconia when I was a teenager as one of my you know sort of book boyfriends he was special when I was way way younger than I am now <laughs> so um, yeah so it's not a surprise if, if the two Remind me of each other. I like Red Butler too. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, so I finished Gone with the Wind, which did slow down my numbers quite a bit. But it's a, a ridiculously long book. So I'm okay with that. And I'm still not hurting for numbers. So um, then I also finished the audiobook of. The Longest Journey by E.M. Forster. This one was good. Um, not super memorable. Just good. Um, it was a nice story. If I was going to write papers on it, I might remember it better. Um, but yeah, it, was just, it was a nice book. Nice story. Um, young people that are super idealistic and, and close-minded growing up and realizing that there's more to the world than they thought and that sometimes their standards need to change a little bit to accommodate the way the world actually works. 
Um, there's other themes in this book, but that was the best I could come up with for if I was going to write a paper on what the title means, why, why it's called The Longest Journey. Uh, yeah. Nice thing about being a grown-up, I don't have to write that paper. So I'm content with, it was a nice book. I might reread it in 10 years if it comes up enough and see if I get more out of it the second time. But Ian Forster is one of those, I like his books, but they never really grab me. So that may just be me and Ian Forster. It may just be that my tastes are not really aligned with his writing all that well. So anyway, I finished it. Now my sister can read it and see what she thinks. Um, the other Daphne de Mario book I finished was a deaccessioned school library book. Uh, this one actually has been in the family for a while. I'm pretty sure my sister got it from one of those, you know, off hauling books from, you know, libraries sales. Um, quite a while ago. I think this was actually just after I left high school. So it's been a while and none of us have read it. So it has been read now. It was good. Not as memorable as uh, Rebecca, but I think if it was talked about more, this one is at least as strong a book as Rebecca. Um, yeah, I liked it. And I will probably reread it in a few years um, because I do like Daphne de Maurier enough to do some rereading once I've gotten through more books that I am not rereading. So I will probably look for a prettier copy though. And the way I do a lot of this is when I come across the copy of the book that you know I want to reread it with, that's when it's time to reread the book. So I will send this on to my sister so she can read it. And when I come across another copy of Marianne, free or very cheap or a gift or whatever it is, when I come across a new copy or a nicer copy, that's when it's time to reread this book. Um, we'll see when that is. And then I finished one book in this stack. See this book here? This is not a 1997 or earlier book. Yes. Um, I made a couple exceptions, actually, to my rules because one of the things that happens in a lot of readathons is that books that were more than 50% done going into the readathon don't count. Um, you can read them, they just don't count for the readathon. And I kind of went with that thinking for this book and for one that I can't show you guys, it's a library book, um, because I didn't want to return the library book unread and I didn't want to um, pause this book halfway through for an entire month. It's not that long a book and I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to wait that long to finish the book. So, um, I had to finish both books though in the first seven days of April, which I did. Um, so this is Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians, book four, The Shattered Lens. Um, book five is also out. I think it came out a couple years ago as well. Um, I will not be getting to book five until next month. But book four was good. I still highly recommend this series. It's cute. It's fun. It's also middle grade. So for any of those games where you need to read middle grade books, these are good books. Um, yeah. They're a little silly, which I need because I've been reading other things that are not silly. Um, so I've been really enjoying them. And they're Brandon Sanderson and they're among his shorter work. Um, most of Sanderson that I've read is the behemoths that take forever. And um, But the uh, Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarian series 
they're all nicely short and fast books. And the audiobooks are really cute. Um, so if you want to do audio for them, definitely they're, they're a fun series to listen to. I actually read this one with eyeballs because um, I didn't really want to use um, a checkout slot for it, seeing as I already have it in print. Um, and I actually started the series. I started doing the audiobooks for the other books in the series because I got this one from a free shelf and it's book four and I had to get to it before I could read it. So, um, yeah. The other print book I have to show off is Willa Cather, a pictorial memoir, which is not a memoir. This is a biography, not a memoir. Willa Cather did not write this book. It is not a memoir. Oh my goodness. Um, but it is a pretty word, so, okay. Um, this is like the old school version of kind of nonfiction graphic novel things. Um, what do you call a graphic novel that's nonfiction? It's not a novel then. It's just graphic nonfiction? Doesn't sound right. Anyway, um, this is what we did, boys and girls. This is what we did for people that wanted a book with pictures that was nonfiction before we did graphic novels all the time. And here's kind of what it looks like. So you have some text, you have photographs. There's text under the photographs called captions. And sometimes you have a lot of photographs and not very many text bits. Right. This is what we used to do. And they're pretty fast, but if you're actually doing them right, if you're actually reading them and looking at the pictures and reading the captions and thinking about it, they do take a little while. Um, so it's not something where you just flick through the pictures and you're done. Um, anyway, this one was pretty good. It's about a 120, 130 pages. Um, really good pictures. Uh, kind of going through Willa Cather's life and career um, and showing images from her life and also from settings that she was writing in. Um, so definitely good. I've read two Willa Cather novels so far. Um, Death Comes for the Archbishop and My Antonia. My Antonia was one of my favorites in high school. Uh, it has a character in it. I think her name might be Rita. I don't know for sure. It's been decades since I read it. And yes, I do need to reread My Antonia at some point. Um, Maybe if we do remember December again this year, yeah, it would be the second year of it, might happen. Um, maybe I'll do my Antonia this year for December. Um, yeah, it has this character that um, when her prospects that she was on the wagon train and expecting to, to do with her life, um, when all that falls apart for her, she goes to Alaska. And everybody's expecting that you know, she's this poor lost little girl that is, you know, just going to die in Alaska and no one's going to hear from her again. And, and it's so tragic. Um, they find out near the, the end of the book um, that, yeah, she's rich. Uh, she became a boarding house uh, person. She opened a boarding house and um, does laundry and cooking and, you know, stuff for all the miners and um, prospectors and hunters and trappers um, and grub stakes a few people who then find gold or, or are super successful and now she's rich like a millionaire rich so I love that character as a high school student as a female high school student in a semi-conservative town the notion that you could you know, go your own way that significantly and it works, that was huge. In a classic novel, like, wow, this can actually work. Uh, in real life, it doesn't always. Um, there is that too.
but one of my favorite characters. So I haven't read that much Willa Cather, but I like what I've read so far. Um, and she didn't write that many books, so I might try and finish the rest of hers this year. Um, the other book that I finished in print that I don't have here was a library book, um, Ali Smith's Companion Piece, that Nicole um, Dusty Book Sniffers talked about as one of her predictions for the Women's Prize for Fiction uh, that didn't actually end up on their list but would have been eligible. Um, I like Allie Smith. Sometimes they're a little over poetic for my tastes, but Companion Piece was good. Uh, it's only 200 some pages long. It's not a long read at all. Um, and it's still following on themes that we've seen recently. Um, it's post COVID enough that COVID is in there. Um, and kind of immigration race issues, the stuff that is going on. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I allowed that one book for my April reading that is supposed to be 97 or earlier, because the last time I turned in an Allie Smith book to our library unread, they lost it. Like they, you know, I turned it in and it never made it to the shelf and it was just gone. Um, yeah, and it took two years to get the library to replace the lost book. And it was a series book. That was annoying. So even though I know that the, it's not likely it's going to happen twice with the same author's books, I just decided not to risk it. So I read it. Uh, and then turned it in, and now I don't have to worry about it. They can lose it if they want to. I've already read it. I'm good. Um, I also did a few books I don't have in print. Um, actually, I do somewhere have a copy of Crick Crack by Edwidge Danticat. Um, I listened to it as an audiobook because I needed an audiobook. Um, there are reasons I do audiobooks because I can do them while cleaning and doing other things. Um, so not having very many audiobooks this year, I've been looking for audiobooks for books that are within my rules. And I did find that one. I have it somewhere downstairs, I'm pretty sure. But I couldn't find it. When I do, I'll add it to the finished books pile. Um, it was good. Um, all of Edwidge Danticat's books that I've read are almost all. I think there might be one that wasn't. Most of them are set on the island that is Haiti and Dominican Republic. Um, and the history of that island is nasty. It is vicious. Um, the stuff people have gone through and that they've done to each other and it makes for great novels but difficult novels. Um, and Dantica is one of the authors that really excels in writing stories in that setting. Um, so I highly recommend her, but they are heavy books. Just, you know, fair warning, it is a heavy book. It's not even a very long book. Crick Crack is about 220 pages, according to Goodreads. Um, so yeah, it's not a very long book, doesn't take very long to read, um, but you might want something lighter afterwards. Um, what did I read afterwards? The Longest Journey. So, you know, it actually was okay. It was kind of a palate cleanser. Um, so that worked. Um, and then I finished one arc, um, from NetGalley. I finished Booked on Murder by... Allison Brooke. Um, not my sort of thing. Um, it was overly repetitious for me. Um, the tropes were maybe a little too transparent. Um, and like the pacing was just wrong for me. Um, and I didn't like the characters. So a lot of things, it just, they didn't work for me. If I was reading this book or this series 
um, while doing a lot of other things where I needed a book that I could be distracted and come back to and not miss stuff, this would be a good sort of book to read. Um, because all that repetition means that if you missed it once, she's going to say it again anyway. Um, she's going to have a different character say the same thing, and yeah, it doesn't matter that you missed it before. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. Um, also, uh, Booked on Murder, which is, I think, coming out this summer. Um, it is book eight in the series. Um, and I do actually read the book regardless of where it is in the series. If it's an arc, um, I like to see how it works if I haven't read the rest of the series. Because a lot of people want to know that. Do I need to read the other books before I get to this book? For this series, yes. You need to read the books before book eight, before you read book eight. Because the characters are getting married in book eight. And a lot of page space is devoted to the actual wedding <clears throat> to a point where I was bored. Um, so the story basically wraps up and then there's the whole like 30, 30 or 40 pages left in the book and it's just basically the wedding and there's still a little bit of plot related stuff right at the very end. But the majority of those chapters, if you're not already invested in those characters, you've tuned out already. Which I kind of did, except that it was an arc and I was reading it as an arc reviewer and so I read it. Um, but that really doesn't work so well if you're not invested in the characters already. Um, the book I finished from um, the Camarcerio Brunetti series last month, um, there are things that can happen in that book that I don't feel bored about because I've gone through 32 other books with Commissario Brunetti by the time I get to that book. So he's an old friend at this point. Um, I don't have that with um, characters in book eight of um, this Haunted Library Mysteries series. Uh, there are also ghosts in um, Booked on Murder. Uh, the main character's best friend is a ghost named Evelyn. Um, and they're just characters that happen to be ghosts, basically. Um, rather matter of fact, not even really magical realism, they're just ghosts. They're just there. Um, so that's kind of a cute, quirky sort of feature. Um, yeah, I think I might like that bit better too if I read the series. Um, in its entirety and got to book eight. Although I'm not sure. It, yeah, maybe not quite for me. But, you know, I could see some of my friends enjoying it. So anyway, so there's that. Uh, not a terrible arc. I think I gave it three stars. Um, maybe 3.25 stars on Storygraph. Um, I haven't actually updated my Storygraph with all my ratings yet. So some of these are ballpark. And I'll see what I actually do when I update Storygraph, because I'm still so new to Storygraph. I do everything on Goodreads, and then eventually I think, oh, maybe I should sink these a little bit. Um, I also finished The Bell Jar uh, by Sylvia Plath as an audiobook. And again, I think I have a copy of it somewhere, probably downstairs. Um, <clears throat> but I listened to it as an audiobook. It was fast. It's only a seven hour audiobook. So at two times speed, which is my usual starting speed, if it works, it's great. Um, yeah, it didn't take very long to finish. Um, it is a heavier book. Um, it's <clears throat> based around themes of suicide and suicide ideation um, and mental health, mental illness. Um, and involves um, electroshock therapy. So, it is not for everybody. There are some trigger warnings that should be on this book for people for whom that is not the kind of book you should be reading. Um, if I have a print copy of this book, it will not be going to the uh, suicide um, waiting room um, space. 
um, one of the places that one of my siblings likes to send books um, that we're done with is um, a counseling center for suicide prevention, um, which is great. They don't have a lot of good books for people that are sitting there waiting. Um, but this is not one that would be, in, in my mind, permissible for that setting. Um, yeah. Um, I think that's all I finished in April. I say all. Um, yeah. Yep, that is all I finished for April. So, I'm at 130 books for 2024 so far. Not too bad, not too shabby. Um, I will do an update very shortly on where I'm at with all my readathon stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, if you don't already know, Dewey's Readathon is this weekend, starts at 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, which in Mountain Time, which is my time zone, it would be 6 o'clock in the morning. Disgusting. I know I did not set this thing up. I inherited this readathon. Um, this is one of those readathons that it began in 2007 and has been going every year ever since. Um, <clears throat> so I'm sort of the steward of the readathon right now. Um, <clears throat> so it's really cool. Um, I still feel like it's a bit of an honor for me to be able to be heading Dewey's Readathon because it's been an institution now for a while. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. It is a lot of work and I will be very bleary eyed by the end of it, but it should be fun. Um, <clears throat> we don't really do anything on YouTube so far. Um, I may do some things just as me, but running Dewey's on YouTube uh, for the next one. I have some ideas of how to make that work. Um, but I'm not going to commit the next person that runs Dewey's to doing YouTube. Um, I think that's unlikely to work. Um, yeah, we have Instagram and, and Twitter, Discord, Goodreads, and Facebook. Um, nothing so far where the person running Dewey's has to be on video if they don't want to. <laughs> so I think we're going to keep it that way. But I may try and do some live sprints connected with Dewey's for the next one. I might do some test runs of that during the Dewey's. So if you see that I'm doing an hour long live sprint sometime this weekend, that's probably what I'm doing just to see how it works, what sort of format I wanted to do, and you know, just see if I can make it work. Because in the middle of the night, um, we do have people from Europe and from Australia and South Africa, maybe a couple other places. Um, but mostly we have people from the U.S. and Canada. Um, a couple people, people from Mexico usually. Um, yeah, we've done a map before where you, you add your location to the map, which is really cool. We have people all over the world. But most of the time, middle of the night, my time zone, it's pretty quiet. So I will probably try to do some sprint experiments um, during the middle of the night, see if it works. Um, the Dewey's Readathon sprints are um, long enough standing to be traditional uh, in that we've been doing it since 2007. Um, we do a sprint on the 1st, 4th, 8th, 12th, 16th, 20th, and 24th hour of the readathon, every readathon. Doesn't matter if it's one that starts at 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. At those hours of the readathon, we do an hour long reading sprint. Um, and so far, we just announce them on our platforms and then people join in if they want to. Um, so I might do something on YouTube connected with that. Um, Otherwise, I will put the links in the description for finding Dewey's on Discord, Facebook, 
and Goodreads. Those are our primary locations. Uh, so if you want to join Dewey's uh, this weekend, uh, we love to have you. There's no sign up. Just you know, join in on the reading, pop in on on our social media, chat with people, you know, interact. Uh, there are at least six bingo boards now. Um, we went with just bingo boards for our pre-readathon activities this time. Um, usually I do something much more elaborate, but um, I don't have the energy and there aren't as many admins right now that are available to do pre-readathon stuff. So I just made a, a bunch of uh, themed bingo boards um, for the four elements, uh, earth, wind, fire, and water, and then one for spirit or life, something like that. Um, so themed bingo boards, and then we also have our more standard bingo boards. Um, so we have those up. We have some other discussions and challenges and things that, that some of our admins have come up with on the various sites. We have a photo challenge on Instagram that's also been shared on Facebook, I think. Um, so there's a lot going on. Um, and yeah, it should be a lot of fun. We do this three times a year. Um, so if you miss this one, the next one will be probably end of July or beginning of August. Um, usually end of July is what we aim for now. Um, so watch for that and I will chat more about it when we get closer to that one. Um, yeah, this is getting way longer than I thought I had the voice for. So I'm going to sign off. And, um, yeah, I will see some of you guys probably this weekend for Dewey's. I have no idea if I'm going to be on screen on anybody's sprints in the near future. Um, I probably will join Coda's again next week if he wants me on there. Um, I think he didn't mind it. My technology is a pain in the butt. So... Um, we'll see how much it, it'll actually work for anybody, but, um, I may be actually talking on screen on sprints now that I've done it once and survived. So we'll see. Um, but I'll definitely see everybody on sprints somewhere or on the next video uh, or in Dewey's. Um, uh, in the meantime, um, uh, hopefully you guys are having a great time reading some great books, and I will catch you later. Bye, guys!